Are you overwhelmed? I want to help you. This is going to be a little bit unorthodox sermon. As a pastor and a preacher, my passion is not just to sermonize or pontificate. It is to serve you, it's to serve you in this community, whether today you're watching in Kirkland, Washington, where our church began, or whether you are watching in India right now facing unprecedented pain, loss, and challenges. Wherever you are right now, Singapore, in Tokyo, in Ghana, in Nashville, in Miami, wherever you are watching, I wanna help you with that feeling, that sensation, that emotion called overwhelmed. What does it mean to be overwhelmed? Well, simply put, it means you feel like you are not a good match for all that is required of you. For instance, let's say you have a list, a to-do list, like many people use still today. And maybe you look at that to-do list and you think, I cannot do all that is on my list to do. Maybe on that to-do list is to care and think about those in pain and loss and struggling all over the world. We are facing together these unusual, unprecedented, painful and challenging days that in some cases feel like they just keep going on and on and on. There is an upheaval, not only in this country, but many countries all over the world. There is a cry for help with this pain and pandemic, and there is a, cr a cry for true justice, equity, and equality. What I have found within our own community is a reoccurring theme. And this theme goes something like this. I just feel overwhelmed. I feel weary. I feel worn out. I feel behind. I feel lacking. I feel less than. I want to help you with that. I want to speak to that. Now, this is definitely one of those messages and one of those talks and sermons that if right now you're thinking, well, this doesn't really apply to me. I've actually had the best string of days in my whole life. I am so happy to hear that. But this is a sermon you could tuck away for the time you do feel overwhelmed. The truth is, for those of us that follow Jesus, our life begins to take on the shape of a missionary, right? We live where we live on mission. And sometimes that mission seems completely overwhelming and we seem outmatched. So much pain, so much calamity, so much injustice, so much wrong, so much error, so much manipulation, control, power, oppression. It's like disease, wars, rumors of wars. Where do I start? God, what do I do? How do I make a difference? I feel like my life and what I'm trying to do to make a difference is a drop in the bucket at best. So I've titled this message, Help, I'm Overwhelmed. If that's a feeling you're experiencing right now, I dedicate this message to you. I want us to go to the very beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter one. And I wanna show you something um, I've never seen before, at least certainly not like this. It actually came to me in a conversation I was having with a friend and the conversation went probably like you now have figured out it went. There was a point in the conversation where my friend on Zoom call said, I'm overwhelmed. I'm just overwhelmed. I feel like quitting. I feel like giving up. I feel like walking away. I feel like climbing in bed for a week. If you've ever felt like this, please listen closely. Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to start in verse 5. Listen to how the first day, now this is an introduction to even the concept of days or a week. It's the first week on record. It's the first few days on record in the history of what we call mankind or planet Earth. It says, God called the light day and the darkness night. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5. Evening passed and morning came marking the first day. Now jump to the end of the second day, verse 8. Evening passed, 
morning came, marking the second day. Now let's jump to the third day, all in Genesis 1, verse 13 now, evening passed, morning came, marking the third day. There's a reason I'm doing this. Come on, let's jump in out of verse 19, end of the fourth day, evening passed, morning came, marking the fourth day. You know where I'm going. Now on to verse 23, evening passed, morning came, marking the fifth day. One more time, one more time. Verse 31, evening passed, morning came, marking the sixth day. And then Genesis 2, 2 says on the seventh day, God rested for he, was he had completed or finished his work of creation. Wow. All right, let's step back just for a moment. Help, I'm overwhelmed. How is this a help? Well, I want you to notice that Genesis chapter 1 reads like poetry. I hope you can feel the rhythmic nature of the writing. I hope you can feel it. And the evening passed, and morning came, and that was the first day. Evening passed. Morning came, and that was the second day. Evening passed, morning came. Evening passed, morning came. Evening passed, morning came. There's this rhythm. There's this cadence. Who designed this? Who created this? Who made this? Who came up with this? Whose idea was this rhythm? God. This isn't news to you. I'm truly not trying to patronize you. I know this is obvious, but you have a rhythm somewhere around here right now. It's called the beat of your heart. Boom, 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 boom. Have you ever watched the ocean, the tide? All right, then it goes out. Then it goes out. This is not the exact replica of the sounds of the ocean, by the way. <laughs> but here comes the surf. <sighs> Crashes on the sand. It goes out. The sun, the moon, the tides, the night, the day, the stars, the earth's rotation. All of these things. Seasons. Leaves falling. Leaves budding. Grass growing. Dormant snow, sun, all of the rhythms and the seasons and the cadence of creation, who do they come from? They come from the core and character of God, which is to say, based on what we can see, who is God? What is he like and why? Did he make the environment? Why did he make our skin and bones and nerves and ligaments and joints and organs and bloodstream? Why did he make it the way he made it? Because evidently, he is rhythmic, right? There is symmetry, mathematics, all of these things that speak to, the scripture says, let all things be done decently and in order. There is a rhythm to what God does. We're getting somewhere. Now look at Matthew's gospel with me, and we're gonna read it in the Message Bible. Matthew chapter 11, probably my favorite passage in all the Bible, verses 28, 29, and 30. Listen now to the words of Jesus. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Are you overwhelmed? Religion means are you burned out on rules and morality? Come to me, Jesus says. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Listen to this line. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace or rhythms of gift. Rhythms given to you by God. They're unforced. They're unearned. They're unmerited. But there's rhythm. And then Jesus goes on and says, I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company, company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Hear this again. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. 
I preached the whole message one time, and I would say this over and over. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. I want you to pick up the rhythm. And the evening passed, and the morning came. And the evening passed, and the morning came. There is a rhythm. There is a cadence. There is a beat to your life and to your lifestyle. I believe that some of what we're facing right now in the technological age, the information age, as they call it, is an inundation of the amount of information and exposure that we actually do not personally within, our, within ourselves have the capacity to contain. So the results are very taxing on our brain, our soul, our body, our ligaments, our joints. I tried to do some stretching today. We feel tight. We feel stressed. We feel worried. We feel fearful. We see so much calamity. Today, I literally, there was a video on my news feed of a tragic accident on the ocean. And I watched people in real time, just from a few hours before, who were struggling to survive a wreck. It's almost all too much to bear. What God wants to reintroduce to you and to me is rhythm is rhythm. Now, there's much we can say and much more I can preach on the subject of rhythm. I'll say this. There's this scripture that says, man plans his way, but the Lord directs his step. Man makes plans, God directs steps. God, evidently, is focused more on your steps than your plans. And your plans are important, and we are going to make big, courageous, bold plans. God wants to help you step, step, step. Step. Today, on this day, God wants to help you take a step. Maybe just a step. Most days, I'm convinced God just wants us to take one step. If you're like me, I, I look at a day and I think all the meetings and all the people and the calls and the phone calls and the Zoom calls and things I need to make, connections, and I think, man, I got to make 17 steps today. It's really of my own making. God wants us to discover a true rhythm to our life. I'm so grateful for the name Jesus. Do you know when Jesus received his name, the angel of the Lord told Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus in a dream, you shall call his name Jesus. Why? Because Jesus means Savior, or God is Savior. Every time you say the name of Jesus, you are declaring you are not the Savior. Did you know that? I love Jesus. God is Savior. I love the fact that I'm not my Savior. You say the name of Jesus, there is power in that name. It invokes his character and the contents of his character and all that he is. But it also declares over your life, again, I am not my savior. I'm not anybody else's savior. I can't save myself. I can't save my spouse. I can't save my kids. I can't save my friends. I can't save my country. I can't save. I am not the savior. I am a follower. I am a student, not a savior. I'm a sower of seeds, seeds of love, seeds of empathy, seeds of understanding, seeds of compassion and mercy. But me, me, I am not a savior. Now maybe you struggle with the similar stuff. When I feel overwhelmed, it is hilarious. And I mean hilarious, not really funny at all. It is painful to consider. When I feel overwhelmed, I start to think think and practice saving myself. The Bible calls it striving. The Bible tells us that the person of Jesus, because of a saving power, has set us free from striving. What is striving? Striving is trying in your own strength to produce what the Bible promised God produces. Righteousness, peace, and joy. 
Do you know who gives you righteousness, peace, and joy? Your conduct doesn't give you righteousness, peace, and joy. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Two-thirds of it is emotional. Righteousness is your position, and that position grants you peace and joy. But that position is not given to you by your performance or your ability. It's given to you by the performance of Jesus. He who knew no sin became sin so that you and I might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And every day I wake up not overwhelmed, but I wake up in my position of righteousness, which provides and serves up in bucket loads, peace and joy. What is striving? Trying to do for myself what Jesus has already done for me. Every time you say the name of Jesus, you can say it out loud right now. Jesus, Jesus. It means God is savior. I am not. He said, well, Jude, it doesn't really mean you're not savior. Yeah, but that's certainly what it implies, doesn't it? God is Savior. God is a Savior, and we see His saving power in the person of Jesus, who is the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. I am not my Savior. I will not attempt and strive to save myself or produce righteousness, peace, and joy. I will rely and trust on Jesus. Now, One of the things I love about God is how he oriented the entire human experience, the earth as we know it, and human beings, and that is he has designed us to turn off every single day. Think about it, right? If you're like me, I need to turn off a solid eight to 10 hours. I mean, literally off button. And we go to sleep. Now, again, I'm not trying, these are very obvious conclusions but God made it that way. We didn't have to go to sleep. He didn't have to create sleep. He didn't have to create a sun and a moon and a sunrise and a sunset and a new beginning, 24-hour period, mathematics, clock, time, seconds, right? Milliseconds. That was all God's design, but it's all telling us a story. And the story is about him, and he has revealed that within himself is a rhythmic lifestyle. And so, here's what I've been so excited to share with you. Help, I'm overwhelmed. Perfect. Not perfect that you're overwhelmed, but I really want to help you. The Bible teaches us that his mercies are new every morning. Check it out in Lamentations. You've probably never read the book of Lamentations. I think I've read it maybe once or twice. Maybe, in totality. Okay, I think, pretty sure it's once. Okay. I've read the whole Bible, but we don't spend a lot of time in Lamentations, okay? I mean, just the the name of this book is Lament, right? Ah! Maybe we should, actually, in in retrospect. Maybe we should read Lamentations more because it feels like a lamenting time in the world. But listen to what Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23 say. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Semicolon, his mercies never come to an end. That is worth listening to this sermon for. I'm gonna read that one more time. Set thy love of God never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Now listen to this. They are new every morning. I love this part. Great is your faithfulness. They are new every morning. I wanna make a statement that I think is important, but completely, it comes out sounding very basic. So it's very easily overlooked and underrated. Here it is. His mercies are new every morning. Your new beginning is just a few moments away. Quite literally. You could be watching this at night. When the sun sets, evening is past, morning came, and that was a day. The sun goes down, the sun comes up. You have, according to God, a built-in new start and a new beginning. What's ironic is that socially, culturally, we've kind of all accepted that January 1, right? If you're like me, I look forward to January 1 every single year because it's like, Ah, new start, new reboot, new beginning, new year, amazing. But do you know that God did that every day? He did it every day for us. His mercies, as sure as the rising of the sun, so are His mercies. Mercy is not getting 
what you deserve. So you can know every morning, you can wake up and go, it's a new start, it's a new beginning, and God, thank you, you are not going to give me what I deserve, for the wages of sin and selfishness is death. You give me life, and I thank you for a new beginning. How bad was your decision today? What dumb thing did you do? Are you watching this like a last ditch effort, hoping that somehow I'll say something that will help you take another step and keep going? I'm so glad you're watching this because I want to tell you a fact. Every single day is a new beginning. You are minutes, moments, hours away from a brand new start. Now, you, you can believe that, or you can go, I don't believe that. That really is up to you and me, isn't it? Because you can start tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, you can start and be like, nothing's new, nothing's changed, nothing's changed at all. It's just not Wednesday and now it's Thursday. It's just not Friday, now it's Saturday. It's just not Sunday, now it's Monday. Or you can take God at His word, and you could look at the orientation of the earth and the planets known and unknown, and understand that He has done this in a rhythmic, sustainable way. You don't have to give up. You don't have to say all is lost. You don't have to say all is pointless. It's not. Today is brand new. Today is a new beginning. Somebody told me recently on the golf course, man, I'm really trying to use that elephant memory stuff. And I was like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, short memory. You know, like I just, you make a, you have a bad hole, you move on, it's a new hole, right? It's a new golf hole. It's a new, new opportunity. Well, once again, golf is a wonderful example for life, unfortunately. But have you made some really, really bad shots today? Tomorrow's a new beginning. Practice the elephant way. Forgetting those things which lie behind the apostle Paul wrote in his own missionary journey with Jesus. It's all, and I press on to all that God has ahead. New beginning, new start, new opportunities. That's what you have. Your good heavenly father knew that you'd need a reboot. He knew that I would need a reboot. And I want to go on record to say, I'm going to be the preacher in your life telling you that all is not lost. In fact, that very thing mistake, decision, or action that you think is your end and your ultimate demise. It may be the catalyst to bring you back to a real, honest relationship with God. This was never about your performance anyways. It was always about His. This was always about forgetting the error of your past and starting brand new. You know, there's a scripture that says, as far as the east is from the west, try to quantify that, the east from the west. How do you? So he has separated our sins from us. Help. I'm overwhelmed. Oh, he certainly did. I think oftentimes that overwhelmed, pointless, fruitless, passionless emotion that seems to settle over us like a cloud. I think oftentimes it comes from seeing life as kind of a never ending, ongoing story and journey. It just keeps going and going and going and going and there's no take backs. There's no new, there's no start overs. There's no new beginnings, right? You hear things in culture where people are like, you know, can't take it back, man. You got to face what you've done. You got to own what you've done, and, and sure, there is some truth to that. But how we have missed what's right in front of us. What's right in front of us? The rhythm. The Bible opens with rhythmic poetry, right? The evening passed, and the morning came, and that was day one. And the evening passed. Let me tell you, church, the evening will pass 
and the morning will come. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it over your marriage. I'm going to say it over your divorce. I'm going to say it over the loss of a loved one. I'm going to say it over the loss of a child, the loss of a business, the loss of vision and purpose and peace. The evening will pass. You hear me. The evening will pass and the morning will come and there will be new mercies and there will be new beginnings and there will be new starts. Your best days are not behind you. You listen to me. I'm preaching to somebody now. I am preaching to somebody now. I wish we could be over coffee together and I could look into your eyeballs and tell you what every pastor dreams of telling every church member. The evening's going to pass. The morning's going to come and you're going to have a new beginning and you're going to have a new start. This mistake, this painful process you have been through, it will not define you. It will not be your end. He is the God of resurrection. When it seems like all is lost and all is done and all is over, your new beginning is moments and minutes away. I dream of people watching this sermon. Maybe you're there in the Kirkland Auditorium watching this. Maybe you're in LA watching this. Maybe you're in your living room watching this. Maybe you're late at night on your cell phone and you're in bed and you're watching this and you're starting to feel what I'm saying. I want to encourage you. You are not alone. God is so proud of you and he loves you and you are so far from the end. It's just the beginning for you. And I don't know who I'm talking to. To be honest, I had a completely different message prepared. And I love it when God interrupts my regularly scheduled program because I'm supposed to help you right now in this moment. And I just want to say, I've lost count how many times I have felt overwhelmed in the last year and a half to two years. I have lost count. But I thank God for my best friend, my wife, my children, my friends, and my community of church home, where I have felt encouraged. And then I've learned to encourage myself. Let me be honest. I preach these sermons, and most of the time, they minister to me, sometimes probably more than they even minister to you. Hearing myself say, my new beginning and my, start, and my new start are minutes and moments away. They are. You have a good heavenly father that while you sleep and while you rest he does not he watches over you and he works things for your benefit and for your good are you overwhelmed god's with you right now and i believe your new beginning and your new start is happening as we speak let me pray for you god we um we just kind of stop everything to admit these have been overwhelming days and we need you. Thank you that every morning it is a testament that creation declares to us new start, new beginning. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for righteousness, peace, and joy that meets us every single day. Love you for that. God, I pray for all of the burdens that weigh so heavy on incredible men and women in this church. We give you our burden. We cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. Help us to learn the unforced rhythms of grace. We want to work with you, walk with you, and watch how you do. Secondly, if you're here and you're watching this and you would like to become a follower of Jesus, it's free. Totally free. He's done all the work, all the lifting, all the burden bearing. He became your sin, your error, your wrong. So that by simply receiving or believing in Him, you'll be forgiven forever. If you'd like to receive that free forgiveness, just raise your hand. Or just say out loud, 
I receive. I receive you, Jesus. God, I thank you for every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice who's prayed that prayer or lifted their hand. I thank you. They are forgiven forever. Thank you. They are welcome into your family by free gift. We love you, Jesus, and we say thank you. Amen.
Yeah. 